Welcome to Billings Clinic Family Birth Center. This video will provide important information about newborn baby and self-care once you leave the hospital. Montana state law requires you to have your baby in a car safety seat at all times. If your car seat is new or used, be certain it is the correct size for your baby's weight. If the car seat is used, check the expiration date listed on a label on the side. Do not use any car seat if it is expired or has been in an automobile accident. These issues compromise the integrity and safety of the car seat. Once you have the correct car seat for your baby, make sure the safety straps are in the correct position, typically in the lowest position. The safety straps are designed to stretch a small amount in the event of an accident. Do not add padding, neck rolls, bulky clothing, or blankets between the baby and the safety straps. Only manufactured padding and neck rolls that come with the car seat should be used. Place the baby in the car seat, buckle the latch, and adjust the straps. The strap should be snug enough to allow only two fingers between the strap and the baby's shoulder bones. Secure the chest plate and slide the plate up so the top of the chest plate is at armpit level. Now that you have your baby secure in the car seat, you can put blankets over your baby if the weather is cool. Next, secure the car seat in your vehicle. Although car seat bases are convenient when putting your baby into your car, the car seat can be used without the base. Either way, keep the following safety tips in mind. The center of the back seat is the safest place to install your baby's car seat. Never place a baby in the front seat. The car seat should be at a 45 degree angle so your baby's neck is in a neutral position. Fun noodles cut to one and a half feet and bundled are handy for getting the car seat to the proper angle. The car seat must be installed in a rear facing position until your baby weighs at least 22 to 40 pounds. The Montana Department of Health suggests keeping your child rear facing for as long as possible. Before this time, your baby's neck is not strong enough to support their head. Once your baby reaches these milestones, their car seat can be turned to face forward. You will need to adjust the straps. If your automobile seat belts are locking, which most of the newer models are, you do not need to use a locking clip. If your seat belts do not lock, a locking clip is necessary to prevent the car's seat belt from loosening and to keep the car seat in place. A locking clip should come with your car seat. If a replacement clip is needed, you can get another one at a car seat safety check. These are held monthly at American Medical Response. Once the car seat is installed, you should not be able to move it more than one to two inches from side to side. A baby's skin is well protected during pregnancy. However, it takes a few days to adjust to the outside world. To care for your baby's skin, bathe your baby only every two or three days. They can be in the water prior to their cord falling off. The umbilical cord should fall off within two to three weeks and should require no special care. Rubbing alcohol is no longer recommended. Keeping the cord outside the diaper will help keep it dry. When bathing your baby, be conscious of keeping the baby warm. Washing their hair last is the best way to do this. Have all your supplies within easy reach. You will need infant soap, a few washcloths, a few towels, and a diaper. Have another person available to help with the first several baths to make it easier to handle a squirming, fussing baby. Never leave a baby unattended. Use water that is warm to the touch of your wrist or elbow. Start by washing the baby's face without soap. Wipe each eye with a different part of the washcloth from the inside corner to the outside corner. This prevents bacteria spreading from eye to eye. Then finish washing the rest of the face. Next, add a small amount of soap to the washcloth and wash the baby's body. Pay special attention to the neck creases and behind the ears where spit up can hide and irritate baby's skin. Wash the diaper area last, from front to back. With a new washcloth, rinse the baby well and then dry him or her. Put on a diaper and swaddle the baby in a dry towel. We recommend swaddling to prevent baby from being chilled and we'll demonstrate the technique later in this video. Finish by washing the baby's hair, again with minimal soap, then rinse well. Dress baby in layers, similar to a temperature that you are comfortable in. To trim fingernails, wait until the baby is in a deep sleep. Use an infant-sized clipper, scissors, or gentle file. Mittens or even infant socks on the hands will keep baby from scratching themselves. Small white or red spots on the skin are common for babies and may look worse after bathing. Dry and peeling skin is common for newborns, especially on the hands and feet. Talk to your baby's doctor about your concerns. Unscented lotion may be used sparingly. 
dermatologists recommend using a hypoallergenic product and waiting three to four months before routinely using skincare products. Avoid using oils and powders. Change diapers frequently and cleanse the baby's bottom each time to avoid skin irritation and diaper rash. Diaper rash care is explained in the Baby Talk booklet located in the information packet you will take home with you. All newborns develop jaundice to some degree in the first few days of life. Notify your baby's physician immediately if his or her skin is yellow just above the navel, if your baby is more jaundiced since discharge from the hospital, or if your baby is feeding poorly. The Baby Talk booklet has more tips on how to check for jaundice. If your baby boy is not circumcised, do not pull back the foreskin for cleaning until he is about three years old and the foreskin has loosened. For a baby boy who has been circumcised, you will need to apply Vaseline to the area with diaper changes for about five days after you go home. To swaddle an infant, fold the top corner of the blanket down. Place baby on the blanket with the shoulders at the fold. Take one corner, fold over the baby, then continue to fold that corner around the baby at the waist. Take the bottom corner and place up under the unwrapped arm or over the unwrapped shoulder. The last corner will wrap the same as the first, across baby, holding at the baby's hand, and continue to wrap around and under the baby. The blanket should be snug, but not too tight. Swaddling too tightly can keep your baby from breathing easily. Allow their hands to be free to reach their mouth. Hands should be midline. Crying is your baby's way of communicating needs. You cannot spoil an infant, so try to respond to your unhappy baby as quickly as you can. A quick response will help your baby learn to trust. Babies need immunization shots to prevent them from contracting diseases that could harm their health. Follow your doctor's recommended immunization schedule and keep a record of your child's immunizations. A recommended schedule is included in the Baby Talk booklet. Infants cannot tell you when they are not feeling well, so parents must learn to read their behaviors and observe their symptoms. You should call your baby's physician if you notice these signs of illness. Excessively tired or lethargic. Not feeding well. Frequent loose, watery stools. Dehydration, such as dry, hot skin, decreased urination, sunken eyes, or sunken soft spot. Increasing yellowness of skin, called jaundice. Breathing difficulties. Excessive yellow-green matter in eyes. Convulsions. Projectile vomiting. Failure to urinate and pass stool normally. Increasing redness around belly button or circumcision. White coating on tongue, gums, or inside cheeks remaining between feedings indicating thrush. Temperature above 100.4 or below 97.0. See Baby Talk booklet for further information on common concerns about newborn babies. Hi, I'm Dr. Erin Prelager. Congratulations on the birth of your new baby. As part of your education, I'm going to discuss two serious issues with you. Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS, as well as how to deal with a fussy baby at home. There are some things that you can do to significantly reduce the risk of Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS, in your infant. First of all, your baby should always sleep on their back, whether at home, daycare, or grandma's house. Cigarette smoke exposure, including on your clothes, is a major risk factor for SIDS and needs to be avoided. Do not have your infant sleep in your bed, the couch, or any other soft surface. Never put any blankets, pillows, stuffed animals, or bumper pads in the crib with your baby. Dress them in sleepers or sleep sacks only. Overheating from excessive sleepwear and bedding is a risk for sudden infant death syndrome. The second thing I'd like to talk to you about is how to deal with a fussy baby. It's very common for infants to be fussy. It's also common for parents to feel overwhelmed, angry, or even frustrated when they can't figure out why their baby is crying. I'd like to give you some ideas of things that you can do when your baby is fussy. When you feel overwhelmed, take a moment, count to 10, put your baby in his or her crib, walk away and take some deep breaths. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to talk to your doctor or your pediatrician. We're here to help you remember that it's never okay to shake a baby. Please refer to the video called The Period of Purple Crying for further information. Next, we will discuss feeding your baby with tips for breastfeeding and bottle feeding. For many women, breastfeeding is a new experience. It is for the baby as well. Even though a baby can suck, swallow, and breathe by reflex, they have to learn to eat. 
you and your baby will learn together through trial and error. When you start to breastfeed, position baby's nose and chin touching the breast. Baby will extend his neck to latch correctly onto the nipple and areola. Baby should be positioned just below the nipple looking up towards your face. Baby's chin should also be on your breast. Baby's lips should be flared on the breast. If lips are tucked in, roll them out to maximize the flow of milk. Support baby's head with fingers surrounding the base of the neck. The palm of your hand rests on the upper spine and stabilizes the neck. Never push on the back of your baby's head. This engages a reflex, making the baby pull back. Typically, newborn babies feed anywhere from four to 12 times in the first 24 hours of life. By the third day of life, your baby should be eating eight to 12 times in 24 hours. It is important to feed your baby on demand. Any sign of wakefulness is a feeding cue. Babies nurse anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes. Babies eat more often when they are going through growth spurts. It may feel like your baby wants to nurse every hour. Breastfed babies do not always burp following a feeding. However, try to burp baby for a minute. If no burp, don't worry. You can tell that your baby is getting enough to eat if they have six to eight wet diapers per day once your milk is in. There are soft mustard colored stools four or more times a day in the first three to six weeks of life. Your baby has a satisfied, relaxed look following breastfeeding and or falls to sleep after feedings. Your newborn should gain approximately one ounce a day in the first couple of months of life. Infant scales are available for you to weigh your baby in the lactation office. You need to stay well hydrated while providing milk for your baby. Drink plenty of fluids, about 64 ounces a day of water or juice. And above all, remember to relax, enjoy and savor this all too fleeting time with your sweet tiny baby. Billings Clinic has lactation consultants available to teach and support you at no charge. Feel free to call our office or stop by. We are located just downstairs from the Family Birth Center. If you are bottle feeding your baby, infant formula should be the only form of milk your baby receives during their first year of life. Remember the following when bottle feeding your baby. Bonding with your baby is part of feeding and creates feelings of love and trust. Never prop a bottle for feedings. Position your baby with his head and chest higher than his legs during feeding. Make sure the nipple is filled with formula and the nipple hole allows milk to drip through at a steady rate without becoming a stream. Don't ever put your baby to bed with a bottle. This may cause choking, increases the risk of ear infections in your baby, and it can also damage your baby's teeth. Feed your baby when they are hungry. Your baby's stomach will not hold much for the first 24 hours. One half to one ounce of formula is plenty for each feeding during this time. Do not force your baby to finish a particular amount. Your baby's stomach will grow along with their appetite. Over the next few days, they will start to take two to four ounces per feeding. Bottle-fed babies generally get hungry every three to four hours. During the first week, your baby should feed at least once during the night. You may need to wake your baby if they don't wake spontaneously. Almost all babies swallow some amount of air when they feed, so you should burp them frequently. It is common for babies to spit up some formula after feeding. You can help minimize this occurrence by offering smaller, more frequent feedings, by frequent burping, and promoting rest after each feeding. Whether you are breast or bottle feeding, you may experience engorgement. If you feel discomfort in your breasts, please call your doctor or talk to a lactation consultant. You should also watch for signs of a blocked milk duct or an infection called mastitis, including a fever above 100 degrees and all over body aches, including an area of the breast that is red and sore. If your symptoms do not resolve within 24 hours, consult your physician or a lactation consultant. Tell your physician or nurse immediately if you have any of the following feelings or signs of postpartum depression. Feeling more depressed or have ongoing feelings of sadness. Have difficulty concentrating. Notice difficulty sleeping or an excessive need for sleep. Have significant gain or loss of appetite or weight. Feel hopeless or helpless. Are unable to enjoy your baby or life in general. Have difficulty caring for yourself or your baby have anxiety or panic attacks, and especially if you have thoughts of hurting yourself or the baby. Don't ignore these feelings. 
You may have postpartum depression. You may need treatment, medication, or counseling. Your doctor or nurse can help you. If you have had a C-section, you may have steri strips that should be removed at one week. When removing steri strips, always pull towards your incision. If you have had a vaginal delivery, you are going to continue to bleed like a period. It will start out heavy and gradually lighten up. If the amount of bleeding increases to where you have soaked a pad twice in one hour, you need to call your physician. You should avoid anything in your vagina, tampons or intercourse, for at least six weeks or until you have seen your doctor. Whether you had a vaginal birth or a C-section, you need to take steps to prevent and detect any infection. You should shower but not bathe in the tub until you are okayed to do this by your physician at your appointment. Call your physician if you notice any of these signs of infection from your C-section incision or vagina. A green or yellow discharge with a foul odor. If you are running a fever, have flu-like symptoms, have redness and heat around your incision site, or severe pain. If you have one or more of these signs, call your physician. Please remember to review your booklets about care for new mothers or baby talk child care tips for new parents, which were given to you in the hospital. In addition, Billings Clinic Health Lines registered nurses will be calling you at about two weeks and again at four weeks after your discharge from the Family Birth Center. They will be checking in to see how you and your baby are doing and if you have any concerns. At any time, if you have health questions about your baby or yourself, you may call our Healthline registered nurses 24 hours a day. Trusted health information is also online at billingsclinic.com.